Okay guys, our latest PowerPoint after the events of today. Here he is. <laughs> God Almighty. No mistaking whose image this is. Now the first news from Giuseppe this morning ended at 10.48 a.m. our time or 2.48 a.m. Evola, Sicily time. Giuseppe said he had overheard Detective John Eleonora saying he was going to be relocated. Yet he, Eleonora, is supposed to be in Rome. Actually, what he said was he heard them over talking. Mm. Anyway, we told him if he could make an escape to do so. So an hour and 15 minutes later, he replied and said they were leaving now. He and the friend he was staying with. We have the no-name friend online as we speak. He is saying the phone that was confiscated by the detective he found in the front room of his house. He needed the phone for emergency. Then he said he had travelled to the other side. Well, this is actually where we, we thought he was headed. You'll see later the twist in this. So... He needed the phone for emergency, then said that he had, had travelled to what we thought was the other side of the island, 291 kilometres north. And uh, he'd made the, the trip, it's 185 miles, in 75 minutes from the last contact with Giuseppe. And then after the reports of what happened, an hour after that, he'd just received Giuseppe's head. <sighs> anyway, all totally insane. So what have we got? As you've read in the letter attached to the upload we did this morning, which was the first reaction to this news, and then we began going, hold on, this doesn't add up. So the conversation continues about what he told us in the letter. We ask questions like, you know, the, the ditch, um, the street he gave us is in, is in a town off the expressway. And it's a town with hundreds of cars. He says it was like a ghost town. And, and the assumption was because it was late at night. The car is in the ditch. He said in the letter, if you read, the car ended up in a ditch. Yet when you Google the area and get down on the street level, there's no ditches at all. There's no... You get, it's, it's lovely actually, quite flat road right to the curb and guttering, no ditches. And it's like that all over. Now, all right, so they're heading down a, a back street along the, um, the Via San Leo. And then the shooting starts. We have no idea how it got to be shooting. So Giuseppe runs off, apparently because the car is stuck in a ditch. And he shot eight times, three in the heart, two in the head and three times in the ribs while the two friends are watching. Then the killers hose down the road, wash away the blood and take the body. So now the two survivors who um, uh, got shot in the left hand and the other bleeding profusely, assuming, shot in the leg and cannot walk. This is later when he's telling us the story. Okay, so they get the car out of the ditch and then they get going. Now, we say, because we are under the impression that he's heading to Isola, which is, far as we know, is 291 kilometres away. So I want you to get used to the repetition of this because this is what I say over and over. So, you know, we say they travel 291 kilometres in 20 minutes. And... Uh, Okay, so he's made it to our solar, which we're thinking is that far away, waiting for a doctor and a nurse to come to the place where they are staying. The man shot in the leg, who is a friend, in this time, makes a funeral card, sends it to Yar's email, and saying that he got the photo off the internet and he also had one like it at home, and then please burn a candle for Giuseppe. So now we go to do the math. 291 kilometres, remember this is what we are thinking because this is what we found, less than 9.42 kilometres from Avola to Cas um, Casabili where, where 
apparently the shooting took place, and then they made their escape. So, you know, they've travelled another, in our minds, 281 kilometres in 20 minutes. Hello. Um, and then he's, he's online within, to actually it was less than that, it was within 18 minutes from the last, it, it, from the last um, connection with Giuseppe and we've got all the time to when he said that the murder happened, which was 3.45 a.m. their time, 18 minutes later, he's travelled in our mind 281 kilometres so it's 18 minutes, and then uh, he's had time to upload that lengthy letter to the Facebook, change the Facebook page, and uh, locate photographs, all kinds of things that, um, as you know, take time. So here's the location. <coughs> Somehow they get going. They travel 12 kilometres, then go off the expressway. So we're talking about the original 12 kilometres before they're off in the uh, Via San Leo, down a back street of Casabili, and then suddenly run into a ditch. Yeah. The population is 5,800. You can see there, there's no ditches. The average road height is 52 metres above sea level, and we're told it's like a ghost town. Assuming because of the time of and night, we did whatever. The Google Earth like street view going down that whole street, and there's no ditches. There's no ditches at all. Actually, they're lovely and flat, aren't they? Mm. We'd like to have roads here like that. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, this is where it's all heading. Let's move along here. So, yeah, this is all happening from Father. Well, Giuseppe Ciavello's Facebook page. Now, when when Giuseppe was talking to us before, like yesterday, there was no avatar on the page. Now the avatar has been re-uploaded; it's been fully activated, and supposedly this dear friend of ten years is in Isola, north of Casabili. He's called for medical help. A doctor and a nurse is on the way. Now, the population of where we thought they were headed over here is 7332 in 2010. So this is the distance that we're thinking that they've had to travel and kept saying over and over. So in our mind, 20 minutes after the shooting, they've got the car out of the ditch. <laughs> How did it get? Anyway, anyway. Shot in the leg, avoided capture, watch as the killers take the body of Giuseppe away and others hose down the road to remove any evidence and not disturb the residents with at least 10 gunshots. Now, it was me talking to him and I repeatedly say to him, the distance from Evola to Osola is 291 kilometres. And then you asked that, you know, it was a four-lane expressway, it links the towns, and to travel this far in 20 minutes, because he was saying that the murder happened at 3.45, and then uh, <clears throat> it was only 18 minutes later that first contact was made with us, means an average speed of 840 kilometres per hour, or at 100 kilometres per hour from... Casabili. <sighs> so, Giuseppe's friend, who supposedly grew up in Sicily, had no answer for Isola province of Palermo on the north side of the island, which is in a straight line, 222.2 kilometres from the other Isola in Syracuse province, northwest of Casabili. And this is where Manon came in. She was the one to find the other Isola that he was referring to. Okay, so this is going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. <sighs> Waiting for... Uh, doctor and a nurse. His telephone 
Giuseppe's family, they are devastated, called a doctor who incidentally must report a shooting, avoid the murderers, fearing for his life, yet is now telling us from a Facebook that was closed some days ago. He's changed the Facebook back, background <clears throat> to the candles. He's found a picture of Giuseppe on the internet that is <clears throat> not easy to find at all. Made up a remembrance card and sent it to Yar's email. And all this while, you know, bleeding to death from a gunshot wound in the leg. In addition, he says he saw the murderer and can identify him, yet is seemingly not concerned after the severed head is delivered to the door and he answers the door. Okay. As if. As this is not enough, he has no idea there are two towns called Isola. He implied the ghost town may have had men lying in wait. If this were so, how come the killers knew they had escaped 10, 12 kilometres away, rushed into position, yet could easily have shot them all as they escaped the 14 security people? He sends a picture of the detective he found on the internet, says he saw him shoot like he was a marksman, and the photo, of course, is not the detective at all. There are two forums of where the photo, the face, the same photo is used as an avatar. One man called himself Angelo and the other is Croce on two different forums. So this photo here is a very popular dude. And then this is the, um, this is the funeral card that he's made. Oh, <laughs> hello. So he said while waiting for a doctor and nurse, he had searched the internet, found the detective's photo and also Giuseppe's, then wrote the dates of his birth and death, sent it to us and asked if we would light a candle. He uploaded to the Facebook the photo of John and Eleonora, the fat fuck named supposedly by Giuseppe, who had coined this nickname, adding he would kick him in the balls next time he came to the house. Very brave but stupid. So at this point, Yah asked for the address where they are at, where they are, were at, so he could send a Federal Express to pick up the severed head and ship it back to Australia. All right, so let's review. Originally, there was a, accordingly, there was a cop at the rear of the house, and the detective John Eleanor lived nearby. Then we're told there are 14 security men guarding the house, but they have a plan of escape. A friend with a car. Then the confiscated phone is found in the front room, taken by, and the phone was supposed to be taken by Detective John Eleonora, an American Italian. His photo he had found on the internet, adding Eleonora had been hired by the Vatican, the same who told Giuseppe to stop watching the internet, yet did not take the computer away. Computer away. So, of course, the photo is not him. It's so, all. From the shooting, another 20 kilometres to a rectory. He had phoned ahead and yet who knows the phone number of a rectory. But instead of going to a hospital, he goes to a priest, search the internet from the rectory, photoshops and on and on and on. So try it. Search either men and nothing is easily located. How long does it take to drive 20 kilometres, 20 minutes at 60 kilometres per hour and 16 minutes at 100 kilometres per hour? And it's all a ploy to put us off going to Rome. What they're doing is obvious. They wanted to wanted us to let them know when we will be in Rome. Yes, because we got this email supposedly from Giuseppe. Tell us your plans. Tell us everything about your plans and your itinerary. Of course, we didn't. We said we'd be in Europe, outside of Italy, gathering together followers as there was no rush as we were in a Revelation 11.17, waiting for May 10th when the annual eclipse occurs in Australia. We were told by the Eleonora Collection Francis had something up his sleeves, plural. Even a dumb detective from America would get the word sleeve and not sleeves, glamour, right? Suggesting that the murder of Giuseppe would take place and also dueling that with uh, um, Benedict, you know, being so sick and then the re that report, etc. So mm -hmm. two sleeves, Giuseppe and so, Evola at an old police station and never had access to a computer. His story was typed by a cop from Rome, name unknown, 
On that point, the logic falls apart. It is alleged Giuseppe is taken to a house in Ebola to stay with an old friend of 10 years. We asked if he had money. He said, nope. He said he paid very little rent to the friend, yet Francis had chosen the house. We asked if he had a webcam. He says, no, the same style of computer he used in the office of Pope Benedict. We asked if we sent a camera to where his friend worked or a post office. No answer means no friend at all, no rent, no job. We are told Francis had removed the address. Question, his friend did not know his own address of the house selected by Francis, where Giuseppe had access to a computer? One conclusion, Francis the talking mule would have been smarter than that. Francis is very concerned, he knows he is Lucifer. We flushed him out when he became Pope. Revelation eleven seventeen saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. It's the annual eclipse on May the 10th. Luke 15, 22, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Ring, 1146 from 1147. A finger ring, ring, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. The great pyramid, unfinished queen's chamber, the bridal pass, is 1521, pyramid inches long. We healed our first AIDS victim in Port Moresby on our, in October. On the, excuse me, on the 22nd of October 2008, add 15, 21 days, equals December 21st, 2012, the end of the Mayan calendar. And this one is for Francis and his goons, Job 15, 21. A dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon him. So there's the May 10th annular eclipse. New Zealand, down in the bottom corner there, 888 miles between latitudes. The location of the annular eclipse, 116.26 west. And of course, that is the width of the antechamber in pyramid inches. There it is there. And there, 1521, is the length of the passage into the Queen's Chamber, 1521. The following is the forensic evidence of today only. It has built up into a wave of such stu stupidity now I would like to apologise to the talking mule Francis and Donald O'Connor, who was the tap dancing straight man for the series in the 1950 era that he watched in the local marina theatre on Saturday afternoons. Next we have two towns, the same name, different province, one 20 kilometres away and the other 291 kilometres. When we questioned Giuseppe's alleged friend over and over and over about it, he did not pick us up on it, as he is from Rome and not familiar with Sicily. So this is all the events of today. Here's the conversation. You can go through it at your leisure. This is the original conversation supposedly with Giuseppe that started at 9.16 this morning and lasted for just 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask if he knows any mafia. Now he's saying that, uh, and his uh, language is <laughs> devolved. <laughs> He's talking about Eleonora as the uh, Italian-American. He says he lives in Rome now.
so I say, fat fuck, that's the name he's gone for him, lives in Rome. Who is watching you now? So then he says, uh, yes, the police are. So yes, it's true, he lives in Rome. And the police are watching you now. Front and back, 24 hours. Yes, of course. So and that is when he suggests he's to call Eleanor a fat fuck from now on. He put 14 security guards surrounding the house because of before. And then uh, I talk about the webcam from Castel Gandolfo. We were told that it's done. And of course, the stories of Benedict being sick and won't be with us much longer. And I say, this is where I say, this is the Francis up his sleeve plan. He says, yes, it is. How do you know? That is exactly the plan. It's almost like it was a diversion. Um, and then I say, obvious, we saw the upload on the site within hours of uh, the reference to Eleonora yesterday. He says, yes, of course. I thought later how insistent. But yes, this is the plan when in fact it was up his sleeves, meaning both sleeves. I say, have you watched our uploads from yesterday? We warned the plan of Francis. See, yes, I have, but the sound was a little bit hard to hear. And then he says, I have to deal with the cop. This time I'm shutting down and hiding the computer. That was my thought. How do you hide a computer? It's, yeah, it must be old style. Laptop that you yeah. Slip under right. I say, yes. So that conversation finished at 9.30. And then uh, it's picked up again at... Uh, it was actually 10.45, but here's 10.47. We know where we are going, and I just wanted to type you this before we leave. I'll speak to you in some hours if I make it alive. If I don't, I love you and the Christ better than my own family. So go hide out somewhere. We'll pick you up from wherever you are and just get a message through here. I wish to meet you one day in person. We'll do. So... Yes, telling them about using the name Brian and Galati Marshall. I was thinking of Catherine and how she used it against the police who were pestering her. Then we say to stay offline. And then you can see here the timing of this. That was 12.03 p.m. This is Queensland time, Australia. Now, um, yeah, sorry, uh, drawing to attention. At 10.48 a.m. So that was the last bit of conversation with Giuseppe. I post this immediately, that this, so it's 10.48 that this is posted. But that, he didn't see that. It wasn't marked as red. And then suddenly at 12.03, so this is only one hour and 15 minutes between this and then the posting of this very long letter that comes in from the supposed nameless friend who was granted in uh, you know access to the logging information blah 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 announcing the death at 3 45 a.m so this was again 18 minutes before contact was made when he's in Casa Bili. Here we go, you can read through that. My plan was to head north to a town called Isola, had to pass through another town, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, we had only a contact drive us. He was slightly wounded on his left hand. I was shot in the right leg and cannot walk at the moment. I will be treated by a doctor and nurse who are to come to where we are staying soon. I had retrieved my cell phone before we escaped in order to call for help. Now that would have been the stupidest move ever because everybody knows you can track anybody through their cell phone. So why, why you just piss off? Mm. <laughs> anyway, here we go. The description to Seppi we saw eight times. From what, I, from what I saw, it looked as if he was shot three times in the heart, twice in the head and another three times around his ribcage. Apparently, now this is where it's really stupid, apparently the detective is well aware of how to use a gun, that dirty bastard. Well, that sounds like the detective, you know, like blowing his own horn there. Mm. In terms of the whereabouts of dear Giuseppe's bodies, like who talks like that? 
I believe the inspectors working with Detective John Eleonora had taken it with them, had taken it with, and cleaned up the blood in order for people not to notice. Like, what about the 10 shots? He was killed on the road while running as the car had gotten stuck in a ditch. But we later got the car out when he saw the map of the road, completely flat, no ditches. He died screaming in Italian, Brian, let it go lightly, Marshall. Marshall is the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty and everlasting. Never before in my life have I witnessed such loyalty and trust even to a man one has never been. I myself now believe that Brian Marshall is God. Like, uh, mm, all very sus. You can see the posting. That was all posted all in one minute. So he never mentioned what his name was the whole time? No, the whole time, no. But that's very sus. Well. Yeah, it is totally. So, uh, you know, of course I see that and I immediately burst into crying, wailing. And uh, it's a horrible thing too. It's the last thing. I think I said to you a couple of days ago, didn't I? If anything happens to you, just you up. <laughs> Anyway, so here it is. Go through the conversation and see, uh, like, already he's got things so organised, I'll leave his account on for people to pay their respects, like, let's hurry this up. And he immediately asks, you know, uh, at 12.13, he says, Mrs. Martha, I want you to do a web video of a memorial service that you can do in honour of Giuseppe. I'll send you a picture of him. You know, this is all within minutes you know, so, uh, yes, okay, just found, I just found it on the internet, I have this picture at home as well. So where is home? Like, supposedly they were supposed to be in his house, but it was a place found by Francis. Yeah. Anyway, this is where I say, well, we've recorded the immediate announcement, we'll use this for the next one, so... That was the one that we uploaded this morning in our shock and horror. However, once we did, it was like, wait on, none of this is adding up. So, oh, we talk about the end time witnesses, prophecy, all kinds of things. Please light a candle. Yes, okay. You told your email, husband's email. I sent a simple funeral card. Oh, well, then, then you can see here the end of that conversation, 12.45 p.m. I sent a simple funeral card. And then the next contact, because we've said stay offline, is uh, at 1.55. So that's an hour and ten minutes later. And then there's the head turning up at the door. Oh, my God, I can't look. By this time, we've gone, wait on it. So I say bullshit, and then you notice so it drops from, you know, screaming case down to serious exclamation mark. Like, yeah, that's when I go, yeah, right, tell Eleonora to fuck off. <laughs> he says, oh, way ahead of you, I hate that man. Um, then I say the bullshit letter all timing out. What are, what are you talking about? Now, I say the letter you post about the death of the chat, all the dis distances make it impossible to have occurred. And then, then I say, you are not his friend, you are one of them. Mm -hmm. And then he says it only takes 13 minutes to get from Evola to Casabili, which can all be determined by Google Maps. That's how everybody gets their driving distances and time. That's what we did. I say you say... You said you made it to us solo because we're still thinking it's over the other side of the island. I just love my friend tonight, uh, not this morning. So this is the conversation going on and on. I say, where are you? Our solo is 291 kilometres from Casabili. He says, I solo and am being, being prepared to go to a hospital. Then he says, yes, we came back faster and I don't know what that means. Then I say, I solo is 291 kilometres from Avola. Now, if you knew the area right there, you would say, wait on, that's, that's, there's two Isolas. There's one on the other side of the island, yes, but, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Then he says, do you know how fast we were going? And I say, one hour and 15 minutes, impossible. 
Then he says, we were being hunted down. And there I say, and you had the letter posted? These are small Sicilian towns. There is no traffic. I said, the card made and you were shot in the leg and you were in a ditch all in 75 minutes and you get to Isola. Because I'm still thinking it's 291 kilometers away. He says, yes, I did. I sent it from a rectory. Where was the rectory? He says, in Isola. All Italian churches have rectories. The priest was living there. <laughs> I said, how can you get 291 kilometers in 75 minutes with all that happened? Then he says, however, I may have made a mistake in the time. I said, we left. I said, no, we have the record. This end of when I last talked to Giuseppe this morning, our time talked. How did you observe all that you say you saw, then get the car out all in 75 minutes when I last talked to, spoke to Giuseppe? Then he goes on about a priest who's never met, just died crying your husband's name. And you questioned my near-death experience as well. I said, you do the math. Giuseppe last spoke with us at 2.48 a.m. your time. Oh, his type goes all over the then he said, apologize, I'm a bit angry. I say, and then 75 minutes later, you say he was gunned down at 3.45, your time. Then it took you 20 minutes only to get to Isola from Casabili. I say, impossible, because we're still thinking it's 290 kilometers away. <sighs> he says, around 3.45. I said, understand, we are getting to the bottom of all the anomalies. 180 miles, because he said we were doing 65 miles per hour. You know, like that's traveling fast. At 65 miles per hour, we're taking 2.67 hours without the shooting and the ditch, etc. Then he talks about his poor family. I said, we spoke with Giuseppe this morning, and 75 minutes later, you come online with a letter full of holes, and you were supposed to have made it one, 180 miles in 75 minutes with all going down that you say no not possible, any part of it. <laughs> I'm crying right now. I told you I made errors. I get it. I said, uh, and then we talk about zooming in the roadway. There are no ditches anywhere. It's all flat. Well, who do you think lives there, huh? Who's occupying those houses? I say, who then? I read, I read his emails to you. Both knew that Eleonora knew what we were doing. They probably had their men occupying it. You wouldn't believe the shit we went through. House arrest for nine fucking days. They planned this. Things these guys are capable of. Oh, heck, I don't know what we're up against. I said this morning's conversation with Jeffy, what, Giuseppe, was that him? You guys should instead try to think of your strategies when you get to Rome instead of focusing on an error I made in the letter. Screw it then. If you don't like it, with all due respect, I should have taken the bullets for him. I said, do you understand it is the timing of all? Not possible for you to go through all in 75 minutes. Forget the letter. If you had not written it, none of it is possible for you to get to our solo and then to communicate with us. Not possible because we're still thinking it's 290. He says, I called the priest on the way there. I say, is he with you now? And then he talks about being born in Pacino and, and know most of the priests living in the Archdiocese of Syracuse. And then the priest is scared as fuck, so he knows it's not. I'm sorry, apologizing. And then that's, that's where I leave it. I just can't go any further with it. So then Michael and Manon, it was actually Manon and Callan, and, and Ka oh, well, Michael traced the origin of the transmission of the bullshit death of Giuseppe. Since Francis cannot kill him, the bottom line was all to try and prevent the two of us going to Rome saying we'll be arrested and learn all kinds of things. We will not be in Rome. We will be touring Europe until Francis is taken care of by Yahweh's angels and we will be videoing the second sun from all over Europe when the time of Revelation 1119 is reached. Then we will enter the Vatican. And where is Giuseppe now? Google Earth. Those coordinates, and here he is. In jail. Let the world think he's dead. The same with Benedict. Have a funeral plan for Benedict. Let the world think they're dead. 
when in fact they're in a private prison. So folks, that's it for tonight. It's been a long, it's 2.35 a.m. It's been a real roller coaster today. It's been a roller coaster day. Unbelievable. What will tomorrow bring? A few more smiles, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, let it go.